You're going to start with all the, you know, the, your name and all that, too, first. Okay. Your all name. right, we're ready. Go ahead and state your name, Helen. My name is Helen Maxine Fiddler. And your birth date? And Mary, her uh, birthday is 2 9 1921. Spell Fiddler, please. F I D L E R. Thank you. And your maiden name? My new maiden name was Helen Bailey, B A I L E Y. Okay. Um, let's see. And this interview is also taking place in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And the interviewer is Joyce Williams and Greg Lyon. And this interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress. Okay, where, and so where were you born, Helen? Uh, Jay County, Indiana. Okay. That's right, because you, you, you and your husband met in school. Mm -hmm. um, and just a little bit about your parents, what they did, and... And how many brothers and sisters? We were born, uh, I was born during the Depression. And I had quite a rough time then. Uh, my mother uh, and dad, farmers. And um, we had two brothers and two sisters. And uh, when the war broke out, we were at my aunt's house and we knew the boys was going to have to go pretty quick. Um, now were you, you were already married at the time? No. We, um, we graduated together in the same class. And, um, 1940. 1940. Um, What did you ask? Oh, I, I was just asking when you met and what and if you, I asked you if you were married when the war broke oh, out. Oh, uh, we work. Uh, John got a job in a Laporte ordnance plant, and so we went up there and we all got jobs as my uh, John's brother and family, and they sold a house, uh, sold their farm, bought a house trailer, and came up there and uh, his dad worked there too then. Then we found out we was getting more uh, pay at the bomber plant. So we came up and we went out here at the Ford plant uh, and that's where they was interviewing people t for jobs as these riveters. And uh, so my sister and I went right to work and it was that was before they actually did the job and it was learning how. And um, so when we got in, the, the riveting job was done with a metal and the rivets were frozen. And you had to put them in, the, to do it, you had to put them in and then uh, they used a gun to to ride, drive the rivet in, and then another person would go on the other side and have a bucking bar, and it was a metal metal, and then they would uh, have to do this with the rivets frozen. And um, we worked there. Well, one thing uh, the they paid us in cash when we got our paychecks, or didn't get a check, we got paid in cash. And uh, Do you know why that was, that they paid you in cash? I don't know. Was, you know, that was out of Willow Run, really, and uh, they paid uh, cash in two dollar bills, you know. Lots of two-dollar bills. <laughs> so this is the Willow Willow Run, uh, Michigan bomber, bomber plant, plant yes. that we're talking about. Yes. So you you were building B twenty fours. B twenty fours. 
we d we worked on this here. It was good sized uh, gas tank that went in the wings, and uh, one day the girl told me she said uh, she was ready. So I got on the other side, and I was using the bucking bar, and she was doing the uh, the gun to drive the bull uh, the rivet in, and. Uh, when I got up there, why, instead of that, she drilled and drilled a hole in my thumb. Ouch. And uh, in the meantime, that night, that day, I got a phone call from John, and he was stationed at the Masonic Temple in uh, Detroit. So I went up there that night, and I had broke a finger and drilled a hole in my thumb. <laughs> But I recuperated and worked there for quite a while and and enjoyed it. How how long did you work there at the at the farmer plant? Well, to back up a little bit, he went in the uh, sir, he went in the uh, Air Force in uh, October, and in December we got married on December the twenty eighth, and uh, I didn't see him for we come back to. Well, we lived in Ann Arbor, and we come back to Ann Arbor, and I didn't see him anymore for five months. Mm -hmm. And uh, you didn't tell her why you was a riveter, though. Well, they needed him. Well, you so you were living in this area in Ypsilanti <laughs> area while the war was going on, and while John was doing his Air Force duty. Right. Okay. Is there a sp specific reason why you became a riveter? Um, uh, for a job. Mm -hmm. During the rough time when we, and we wanted to work, work for the country. Yeah. So uh, then we, I was stayed on for quite a while then. And then uh, when they got in, the station in Richmond was kind of going to be there for a while, I quit my job and went with him. And uh, uh, you said you worked. I uh, got a job in the PX, and uh, I was the only one in there. And then I had two helpers as German prisoners. Oh, that was after we moved to Norfolk, Mom. Yes, it was. When we lived in Richmond, I just was a housewife. But then we, when we went, to, we was there for several months. Yeah. And then we went to uh, Norfolk and uh, got this job. And I couldn't talk their language, and they couldn't talk mine, but they were glad to be, they were glad to be here, German, where they well, was. They were German prisoners. And, and in uh, the meantime, we moved from Richmond, Virginia, to Norfolk, by, and there was a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a convoy, I guess. The whole outfit, you know, in Richmond, was a big air base there, but Norfolk, everybody had to move, and mm. uh, that was quite a deal too. We got a house there and I had all my meals in the officers quarters uh, where they had their lunch and um, what was that like? Well it was the uh, it was better than the than what John was eating huh? <laughs> <laughs> like what kind of food would they have at the officers club? Uh, well you'd get dessert there <laughs> And uh, it was good. We could, uh, but they. I didn't tell them about the PX. The PX was. We sold. It was a small outfit, you know, mm -hmm. a small base, Norfolk Airport, really. And uh, we had. Uh, there was. Uh, Two of our two outfits of, of uh, mechanics 
and uh, I don't know, two outfits of airplanes, I think, because of the B-24 uh, fives. And they, uh, so they had a PX on there, and it was a little store, you know, and she was, they made her manager, and she we run, run the PX. That was a good I, the, I worked in there for quite a while. Do you know what the uh, what the German prisoners had been when they were captured? Were they had they been soldiers or? I I presume they were. You didn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I hadn't realized that we brought German prisoners back over here. I had two of them. Yeah. <laughs> and and they were good workers. Did they, you? They was you glad enjoyed to, working with them. They was glad to be here. Yeah. Because they had it made. Oh you know, yeah, really. Yeah. And uh, better than a POW camp. Show them what to do, and then they'd, and when then they'd come in, and they'd work real good. Mm -hmm. But um, we it, you know lived off the base, so, and uh, uh, we had a lot of get-togethers with the other soldiers too and some of them are still friends of ours today mm -hmm. it's been a lifetime a lot of them are gone and uh, so what did you guys do for for fun when you would go out uh, we'd we'd go out and oh uh, well, we would go to movies we liked to, everybody liked to go to movies and uh, we did, went out one time, and John Folks co uh, come down, and we went into Washington D.C. and uh, did a tour there, and got to mm -hmm. see the, as before the memorials. Mm -hmm. And uh, we it was kind of rough having to cook and stuff like that, but. Uh, no washing machine. Have a lot of money, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, our bathtub was a washing machine <laughs> 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 for everything. Yeah. But uh, we handled things that the boys wanted. They, none of them would go into town very often. And uh, then one time. Uh, John's brother was in the Navy and he'd been in Iwo Jima and all over through there and he hit town. He come into Norfolk mm -hmm. and so we had a, quite a reunion there. Drank a lot of beer. <laughs> and, uh, but I enjoyed my work. What, then, what would a typical day at the PX be for you as manager? Well, I was only one in the in the sales, and uh, and I just take care of all the boys. Mm -hmm. Would you have trouble getting supplies? And uh, no. Some of them, uh, well, I won't say that either because, like silk hose, you couldn't buy silk hose hardly. Mm -hmm. And my sister kept writing, wanting wanted us to get some, you know, for her, but uh, there was things that you couldn't buy. This was before Pennies. And we had uh, ration stamps. Uh, you had them for sugar, and one one weekend I went, uh, went at home, and I did, didn't have a tire to get back to work on, so my uncle seen to it that I got a tire to get back to work. Mm. But they was ration too. Mm -hmm. And I still got my ration books. That, mm. that, uh, but the folks, my folks would help things that we wanted and needed more, but they would help us out a little bit of the ration stamps. Um, now then you, you followed John as he would be uh -huh. Transferred to other places. Right. How would you get there? Would, would you have to travel by I yourself? And, okay. I had a car. 
But you you would have to pack up the house and and move yeah. everything. One time uh, when we moved from Richmond to Norfolk, he went down with a convoy or whatever they called it, and uh, I stayed back and tried to clear out of the ha house. And I went down and uh, stayed the one night, and they had a well, what they call it, where the women would stay and the men would stay, and uh, it was. The barracks, or is a oh, I don't can't the remember. dormitory or something kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. And when I went back, uh, somebody had moved out on us, and they left kind of a mess in the house, and I had to do that all by myself. Mm -hmm. And then, then we went, moved down to. Then I went down by myself. That was mm -hmm. in Richmond. And, uh, by the way, when we were in Richmond. My parents come out there. My dad was quite a guy for history, and we went out. Him and I went out there. There's a place from there where uh, Civil War the Civil War was. Mm -hmm. The barracks, or not the barracks, but the trenches, was um, hell. I wouldn't. They wasn't any further apart than from this side of my house out there to the trees and the yard, you know, shooting at each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he dug it. My dad even dug bullets out of the, the, mm. the trees. Barrack, or the uh, trenches, you know, the dirt was thrown up in front. Mm -hmm. He dug some bullets out of the... Hmm. We got two of them. They're about this long, aren't they? They look like cement. Hmm. <laughs> Good. But that was in interesting, you know, that was in the Civil War. Right. 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 So when when you would um, you had you had a good job while you were in mm -hmm. in Norfolk and you moved elsewhere and, and did you were you able to find jobs? Well, by then that was uh, uh, our daughter was born in 1945. Mm -hmm. So I when we went to uh, Wilmington, I didn't take a job there. Mm -hmm. I quit up the PX and mm -hmm. then we went down. But uh, we sure had made a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to the um, to the bomber plant um, work and like what what would a typical day be like there? Like what time did you have to get there and were you did you have breaks and we had set time and we had breaks. And uh, we, uh, it was so noisy in there, and it was kind of hard to hear when you got this lot of metal between you yeah. to uh, uh, to work to get communicate. Did you have hearing protection? Pardon? Did they did, did they give you anything to protect your hearing? No. No. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was noisy with all them rivets going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what time would you would you normally show up for work? What was... I would say eight o'clock, mm -hmm. and that was a big parking lot out there, mm -hmm. and it would usually had a long ways to walk and have to get there early to get a parking place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, my dad come up and got a job at the bomber plant. John's dad worked there. He worked in the paint department. And uh, then these here, you'd add the wing gas tanks and stuff as you went, and then they end up with a B-24. Mm -hmm. So you were, tell me exactly what you were riveting again. Uh, we were riveting the gas tank. Okay. That's what I thought. And the ones that went under the wings? It went in the wing. Oh, inside the wing. Inside okay. the wing. Okay. And then the wing was built around that. Mm -hmm. But we had to put out so many a day, and I don't remember how many mm -hmm. we had to, to do a day. But, um... So did all the, and it was, it was pretty much all women that were working there? Yes. And did they all have the same kinds of jobs, or that just happened to be your well, job? Well, that, that was my job. Okay. Because they had all kinds of 
different jobs for women mm -hmm. all over the land. Mm -hmm. It was big. Yeah. And um, was it how, how? What was the work hard or? I mean, it was noisy in there, but mm -hmm. was it physically hard to do it? Well, it it was tiring. Yeah. But uh, you could do quite a few rivets in an hour because you wanted to get had to get them done to, before, while they're still frozen or they just bust all apart. <laughs> it's interesting. If it got if it got warmed up, yeah. you tried to do one, it would just bust up. So it was actually... It was soft when you was frozen. Oh, okay. I was thinking that it was frozen as in you couldn't move it, but it wasn't that kind of frozen. No, it was, it was, it was, it was actually it was... freeze. We got them in the freezer. Oh, and you put them in the metal? And uh, they'd drill a hole. Yeah. Well, the, the, there was men that come in and drill the holes, mm -hmm. usually, and then the women would do the bucking. And uh, they'd get this gun and they would go zap and then uh, you'd hold this bucking bar up there and they would just flatten it out. Hmm. And that, and they had to be tight with a gas tank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, did you, you said you lived in Ann Arbor during that time. Did, did you live in what's now called Pittsfield Village? No. I lived in uh, residential in Ann mm -hmm. Arbor. And my dad, uh, when he come up, he lived in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And then he'd come down during the day. He would come down if, uh, or in the evenings come down and read the paper and sit there just to have something to do. Mm -hmm. And he went back up at the hotel and stayed because there's a lot of people worked there and they all had to have places to stay. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my bro mother and sister and uh, one sister and one brother stayed, uh, stayed on the farm and did that work. So that uh, lived in Indiana. they could mm. come up here and mm. do some work and make some extra money to pay for the farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How how many hours a day would you work? Uh, I didn't think we. I don't think we worked on a lot of overtime. But how many how many hours? What, what would be a eight, normal eight, 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 hour, eight hours? Eight hours. Eight hours. Um, seven days a week, or did you have no, weekends off? No, the weekends was off. Sometimes, sometimes we had to get it overtime. Mm -hmm. But uh, you could get it. It kind of hurt. It was, uh, could get hurt on that job if you. Yeah. As I found out. Right. Yeah. Were there other women that, you know, that you knew that, you know, were were injured even more because it does seem like it would be there could be a lot of accidents and this is the before yes. the federal mm -hmm. government sort of made mm -hmm. all these safety things of course when it started out up at our end of the place it was all small uh, smaller parts mm -hmm. but uh, when you get down in the they call it the wing assembly and it uh, we we I enjoyed my work there, but it was a job. Yeah. My sister got paid, and she put it in. Everybody put it in a locker, mm -hmm. and she put it in the locker and locked it and locked it up. But somebody stole it, and so oh. she lost her whole paycheck. Oh. And everybody in the department then uh, took uh, put a little money into it and made up for it. Oh, that. Was... Mm -hmm. And two dollar bills were common. Yeah. Huh? I wonder why that was. Hmm. I don't know. One of Ford's. See, that was Ford product deal. Mm -hmm. was Ford's. But it had gas rationing and tire rationing, and you, you'd have to really take care of your mm -hmm. to be able to get to, to get to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most, I would guess that most people didn't have a car. Most women probably didn't have a car, but you did. And I, I bought a car. At, for two hundred and fifty dollars, an old Ford, mm -hmm. and um, 
I bought that when I was back home, and I think I paid it out in five and ten dollar bills at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it was only two hundred fifty dollars. Then John had a, a little Ford, a one seater, and it had a rumble seat in it. <laughs> and uh, so when we went in the service, he s sold that, mm -hmm. and I kept my car then because it was a two, a bigger car. What kind of car did you have? Ford. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so did you make some good friends while you were working at the plant? Well, we made really good friends. Uh -huh. And what would you, what would you, would you guys go out after work or on the weekends? Well, uh, when both of us? No, I mean you're the friends that you made at oh, the plant. Oh, my sister. Yeah. Um, we lived with a mother and her daughter. Mm -hmm. And we had the upstairs. And, uh, in Ann Arbor. And, uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of the street. Do you still keep in touch with any of those those friends that you had at the plant? Or? No. 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 We keep more friends with our Air Force mm -hmm. group. Uh, the men, as I said, John was saying they would, uh, Wink would come out and he'd buy a bunch of groceries. And that's when uh, these letters I wrote and my niece made a, a thing over them. But I, they would the car pull up and here come two men of the soldiers, Air Force, and they had groceries. And then I would cook for them. Mm -hmm. And they would jump in and help. And one night, uh, we had a, even fixed a turkey. I didn't have a, I had a coal stove. Hmm. And uh, made pies and everything for them, and they really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So they'd buy the groceries and I'd do the cooking for them. Sounds for like a good deal. Quite a few meals. But that was after I, uh, that was when we was in uh, Sir, uh, Air Force. Is there anything that you that you learned while you were working? I mean, other than how to do the riveting, but that experience is that did it make any kind of an impression on you or what? Yeah, because I learned to. I'd never done anything like that, mm -hmm. and uh, to be sure to have your money counted out at night and all that and. It was a responsibility, and uh, we also sold clothes and and bath towels and things like that that the boys would need. And uh, of course, they, their uniforms and stuff was all furnished. And uh, they well, would. Norfolk you know, was a small base. It was just mm -hmm. and. Uh, PX was, she was the only person who worked there really, mm -hmm. other than the Prisoners. German prisoners. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we lived off the base because we moved know, into the. We was married then. <laughs> we moved into the house when we got down in Norfolk, and it was full of roaches. <laughs> so we went in there, and John took a paper. A newspaper up under the sink and lit it and then roaches would fall down and we put stuff on the shelves and went closed it up that night went back the next day and swept it up we never seen another roach after we moved in there <laughs> but, but we, had, uh, we had a lot of fun we had a lot of parties mm -hmm. beer parties you know those soldiers oh, yep. yeah what about working at the bomber plant? Was there anything about doing that that you know that you, you know, that helped you learn about yourself and what and your capabilities and what you could do? It was all new. It was all mm -hmm. new job, and uh, you had to know to the fraction of how to do these rivets too. Uh, how 
much to to work them with the buck and bar mm -hmm. and um, to be on time uh, we I don't know it is a job <laughs> Ford paid him cash two dollar mm -hmm. bills how much were you paid? Like for you were paid every day? No. No. Oh, how no. much? What and was your pay? I wished I had it now. I kept a sum of slips from my. I've always been one to keep things, mm -hmm. and um, I don't remember how much we had. It wasn't much. It wasn't a big salary. But it was good for us. It was mm -hmm. it was a good job, and uh, you learn to respect your fellow man, and and uh, I don't know. It was different. We were both. Went to school in Indiana, graduated in the same class, and then we hit the road, you know, and it, it's different. We were both pretty young at the time, too. Oh, yes. We were 21 when we got married, though. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Which wasn't so odd then, but I mean, you were young to be having the experiences mm -hmm. that you were having. Yeah. We had our first train ride. When we went out to Lincoln, Nebraska, my sister went with me, and uh, we got married. Uh, it was Christmas time, and we went to the looked in the telephone book for a minister, and it was full of ministers, with a lot of them. So the judge said, "Well, if you don't mind, I'll marry you." So his name was John Polk, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that day we went in there and. And we got married. We went out and we had uh, to the restaurant and we had a piece of apple pie and ice cream and a hamburger. That was our <laughs> wedding dinner. <laughs> this was in Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> and the next day then, well, he had to be back to the base and I had to catch the train back to Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. It was our first train ride and that was quite an experience. And then you said you didn't see each other for another five months? Five months then, before we seen him. Mm -hmm. And then I worked to beyond that then, till he could get settled in Richmond and... I'm sorry, that's my phone. Oh. <laughs> it's my phone, it's an alarm on my phone. Mm -hmm. But... I, I almost asked. I forgot to put it on my right. <laughs> but John, he went up and got a job uh, 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 up in there, and he worked in Tetral in the, in, when he was in the ordnance plant, and he turned orange color. And they, they had this little shed out quite a ways from the other building because it could have blowed up. <laughs> and he didn't didn't realize what it health wise and uh, safety wise what it really meant because uh, then we w worked on the machines and you didn't know what you was always kind of scared there because you didn't know well, when the thing made, was going to uh, blow up. We made 37 millimeter bullets okay. and, they, and they were uh, the casing was hollow, you know, and they put tetral in there. And when they shot the bullet and then it hit something, that tetral blew up. The bullet was had powder in behind, but the, that was the reason for the, the 37 millimeter. And then when I was I had a P47 air P47 airplane. It had them, them bullets, or the the shell, their guns on the wings. You know, mm -hmm. was a thirty-seven millimeter, mm -hmm. and that was kind of strange. You know? 
So those those bullets that you made in Laporte were the bullets that the pilots were using to to do their um, training training runs. Right. Oh. Well, and to yeah. well <laughs> to yeah. battle. Right. Okay. So the tetral was what made the color when it hit mm -hmm. the. Tetral was the color of the, the of the powder, gun, gun powder. and it was very potent. And then the, the, then the, the dust and everything that I was working in that turned me. Yeah. <laughs> but but it was temporary. Yeah, I got over that. Is there anything that you'd like to add that we maybe haven't covered or touched on? When we was in Wilmington, we uh, would go down to the beach on the weekends to get mm -hmm. away from everything. And uh, we en enjoyed that. And I was pregnant then for Diane. And John took uh, cra crates. And he made a little bassinet and a little drawers in the thing for with through orange crates and stuff, anything to get it by. And so when we was a, uh, she was a month old, when we come home, started home, and there was another boy driving the car for us, and we uh, had a, a, a hit a guardrail and pulled out the bottom of the car. We were kind of stuck there, <laughs> but the uh, family come and got us. I have, I do have a question that has been, I've been thinking about. When you had the um, the German prisoners of war working for you at the PX, how did people react to them being there? Were they treated with respect, or were people angry at them because they were Germans? I don't really think so. I don't believe. I don't think so. Oh, I don't think they just were another workers for us, you know, mm -hmm. doing something that we didn't have to do, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, they didn't. I don't remember what the clothes they wore. What they? I don't remember that. I don't even know where they slept. I suppose there's a place in the barracks. Mm. I never stayed in the, in the barracks, really. Well, only just a few times because mm -hmm. we lived off the base, you know. I was just curious about how people might have reacted to them. They, I don't think they, uh, they, they didn't show it. Do you have any other questions? No. Okay. Great. Thank you both very Thanks much. Thanks so much. This is great. We got an extra bonus. Yeah.